Welcome back, my name is Last No Meal, and today we're going to talk about Witchfire. It's been a while since I talked about it, but for everyone who don't know what that is, basically it's a first-person shooter game that for a lot of people is like a mix of Painkiller, Dark Watch, and Bloodborne because of the visuals. And it's developed by the astronauts that previously made The Vanishing of Ethan Carter. And if you played their previous game, you're probably wondering, wait, Witchfire is completely different from that game because Ethan Carter was a mystery solver exploration game in a sense, but now they're pushing themselves into something different. And not gonna lie, I was excited that this time they're trying something different, and it caught my attention immediately, mostly because it relies a lot on skill, and with the combination of different weapons and magic you have to find the best way to go through the enemies. And from what we've seen, the combat is fast-paced, and going through levels multiple times is something they want. They want to make the game interesting enough so you can utilize different weapons and magic to see what works best for each level, especially for stronger enemies and bosses. And in the most recent gameplay video, I noticed how it got some dislikes, and after watching the demo, I realized that the main concern people have is that it is going to be a looter shooter in a sense, but not in the classic sense of devs making the game repetitive and then you have to grind through it like crazy just to get that one piece of equipment. After that, a developer in their blog defended their stance on how the game is going to work and they are very open with their development. There are a lot of demos and clips for you to see how it's going, and it's also a small indie studio of like 9 people, so they have to work with what they have. So they first go into explaining what a looter shooter is, and generally, definition is a game where player's overreaching goal is to accumulate loot, weapons, equipment, armor, whatever, by doing various missions, quests, etc. Now usually the most famous example right now is Destiny, the game is all about the grind, and for some it's good, for some it's not, but there is a difference here. And they pointed out that difference with some of the negative comments that say that this game went from Dark Watch to only being a looter shooter. Also when you say this, it means that usually the combat is not the main thing, it's the loot, and the combat is only a means to get that loot. So sometimes you will have games that don't have the best combat, but you still have to go through it to get that loot. And even enemies are sometimes dumbed down to the point where combat becomes easy, repetitive and boring. Again, as stated by the developers, this is not going to be the case here, because the loot you find is not going to fundamentally change how your weapons look, because usually you're just going for that best looking weapon, you know, everything else is trash, you want that shiny little thing, but here you will just get loot that is going to serve as equipment for combat that you're going to be focusing on. So in a sense it's different, it's not about getting that best gear, it's not about hoarding that equipment in your inventory, it's using that equipment for combat. To try a different approach in each level, to try a different way to defeat your enemies, maybe faster, maybe slower, depending on the difficulty you choose. And look, those looter shooters are usually filled with microtransactions and various other things that basically push you to get that one item that, you know, as I said, looks good because everything else looks like garbage. Those are the notorious god rolls. And of course, of course, um, people can say that looter shooters are an easy way to get the game out because you can't, you don't really have to focus on the story and character development, you only focus on doing the same or similar missions repeatedly, which again is not going to be the case here as stated by the developers. They want to avoid that business model to only give you the game without other things you can buy, which immediately puts them in a good position because yes, you are different from the usual looter shooters we play. Other thing is the HUD. Usually in those games the HUD is all over the place from damage numbers to health to various other elements, which makes the game look ugly. But here they mention that the HUD is customizable and you can adjust it in a way so that the screen is not a giant pile of mess. So I'm guessing if you want to play without the HUD, you will be able to. 
Now let's touch on the replayability side of the game. As they mentioned, games like Doom rely on replayability by giving you secret rooms, a score in the end to see your performance in that level, and also various difficulty levels, some are even locked until you finish the game once or even twice. And because they are a small studio, they want to rely on making a smaller game, but with more depth so that they rely on that replayability value. And the only reason for me to play the game again is to experience it in a different way. That's why games that have different endings have that high replayability value. That's why you play some RPG games one time as a mage, one time as a warrior, the third time as a paladin, so that you can experience the game in a different way. So hopefully Witchfire is going to be similar to that, which gives you just different ways of defeating your enemies so that replayability value is fun. And on the other side, linear games offer you that excitement once or twice, but usually it's the same. You go through the level and every time it's the same sequence after sequence, with minor changes mostly depending on the weapons you find on the level that usually is lost after that um, level is done. But those games can still be amazing because they have, you know, they rely on great level design, story, characters and various other things. And also developers touch on the PENCE model, which stands for the player experience of need satisfactions. That model has to satisfy four following areas. Competence, you know the game and its mechanics. Mastery, you can actually play the game well. Autonomy, you can play the game on your own terms. And relatedness, you emotionally connect to the game and its players. And this model does make sense. All of these things here, if executed properly, can give someone more incentive to continue playing it and go through the levels multiple times. And look, from what I've seen, the combat looks really nice, especially how fluid the slide animation is combined with various weapons you will use and just trying to find a different way um, to defeat those enemies. So they want to avoid what classic looter shooter is, a business model which can be implemented in the games that don't benefit from it, just so that people can play it for longer and maybe even buy some loot boxes. And here in Witchfire, the equipment is mostly, as I said, an aid in your journey to help you enhance the main thing, which is the combat, not to collect every single item in the game and hoard it in your inventory. I honestly think this game does have potential and I will be following how it develops and bring you the latest details about it. They also have a blog which I'm going to link down below, so check it out. And tell me down below, what do you think about this? Do you like looter shooters? What do you think about Witchfire in general? And also smash that like and subscribe button for more gaming related news and videos. And also join our growing community on Twitter and Discord. This is LKM signing out and stay classy everyone. Bye-bye.